this bill is all about. Thank you, Madam Chair. Kia ora. Kia ora. Madam Chair, I call Harite Hipango. Ite mana wakawa. Tena tatau e hui hui mai nei tena ahi ahi. E mihi ana kia kauta nga uri nga mana hindua nga hapu nga tiporau. Ko tai mai nei roto i nga ahua tanga o tena fare te fare mere te fare pare mata. Tena tatau katoa. Madam Speaker, listening to those who have spoken in the House before me, uh, I referenced the Honourable Andrew Little, where he spoke about this is the beginning of a new era. May I just take us on a journey back some 14 years, four days ago, to the 4th of May, 2004. That is a day that's etched very vividly in my mind where I joined some other 15,000 Māori and New Zealanders who gathered here and walked on to the grounds of Parliament in protest of proposed legislation by the government of the day. I travelled from Whanganui with my husband and my pūtiki, my youngest, and we joined with the many others. That march led at the time by Dr Peter Sharples and Many of us here in the House today were part of that. And I reflect on that coming from Monganui. I acknowledge you, Ngāti Purau, for we have been on a very enduring passage and journey with Te Awatupua, our Whanganui River settlement. Dame Tariana Turia, Whanaunga of Ngāti Apa and also of Whanganui. She's been part of that journey, but she's also been part of your journey for the time and the years of service, she was a Member of Parliament, a Minister formerly with the Labour Party. She crossed the floor in protest, and that was a precursor to the journey and the passage of those waters traversed here today. This is the first stage. This is the first reading of the legislation that is yours. And I stand as a servant of our community However, I stand as Uri of Whanganui. I stand as the Member of Parliament representing Whanganui. And I also stand and speak as a member privileged to serve on the Māori Affairs Select Committee. Aroha mai, I apologise for not being present at the pōhiri for you here today. I was in service on another Select Committee. And it was interesting, over the passage of time, how our relationships traverse these waters. And one of the submitters on the Select Committee this morning was a former law professor and lecturer of mine. And she exposed my mind and my intellect to the importance of Māori customary rights and interests as my former Māori land law lecturer, Professor Jane Kelsey. As I look up at you also, I acknowledge all of you, those who have gone before, those of you who are here today, and I hearken reflect upon the time when I was a younger woman working in the Department of Māori Affairs here in Wellington under the leadership of Dr Tamati Reedy and of course Dame Iritana Tawhipirangi, who were very much mentors and shapers of my thinking and my passage and journey in life. And here I stand today having the privilege of addressing the House in Ngāuri or Ngāti Purau. Now I turn to speak about the importance and significance of this bill, as you know, because you have carried and borne this. Ngā rohe moana o ngā hapu o ngā te pirau, bill number two is, I understand, the direct consequence of that that I spoke about in terms of a former government's policy, which attempted to deny Māori customary rights. The progression of time now sees us where this bill proposed will seek to contribute to the legal expression, protection and recognition of the continued exercise of mana by Ngā Hapu o Ngā Te Purau. It has never been in question. You have never questioned it, although there have been attempts in governments of days gone by to remove that right. This bill, once passed into law, will seek to entrench and formalise that under legislation. You know your history, 
you know your whakapapa. It's not for me to go over that with you. But I, say, I stand here very, very privileged to acknowledge you and also I acknowledge the Honourable Christopher Finlayson who addressed the House first and also all of you as a senior of colleague of mine who has been dedicated and committed as the National Party MP and also former Minister in the progression of treaty settlements. I also acknowledge the Honourable Andrew Little. I did not know until uh, the Honourable Christopher Finlayson shared in the House the courage and the fortitude that he took in his stance to stand against his government at that time. And I believe that Dame Tariana Turia was the only one, but I do acknowledge the Minister for that. I look at time and it does pass quickly when we're standing here speaking in the House but it doesn't when you're waiting all those years to come here to witness and to hear what we have to say. But more importantly, it is about this House listening to you. And as a member who will be presiding with colleagues on the Māori Affairs Select Committee, we will be listening further in examining, but also having perused the bill in supporting what has been arrived at. I just will traverse very quickly. The history is known, it is on the record, and when we come to the second and the third reading of this bill into law, there will be more detail about uh, the wrongs, but the focus is forward and into the future. And I hark upon the time and the experience working as a younger woman here. I always pondered why there was such a strong presence of Ngāti Puro through our public service and sector. And I know because you had the vision, you had the strength, you had the knowledge, you invested in your young people, many of whom are not so young, but certainly experienced and have gathered on the wisdom of those who are here and have gone before. So I look in closing and addressing the House by commending this bill to the next stage of Select Committee and saying that the national-led government under which this bill was moved forward has made great, great progress completing final and durable settlements of Treaty of Waitangi claims, and your bill is one of those. Your entrenched customary Māori rights will be enforced in this bill. I commend the bill to the House. Um, just before I call the next member, I do want to commend the member for your speech, but I do need to remind you to address the chair and the use of um, uh, the addressing the gallery. It's fine, you can, you can sit. And I know that in further speeches that you will um, make better attempts to do so, but thank you very much. I call Kiri Tapu Allen. I understand this is a split call. You have five minutes. Uh,